So I want to build our understanding of eukaryotic transcription in some key steps. And we will follow this outline for the coming videos. Specifically, there are eight steps that will home in the idea of eukaryotic transcription. First, we will discuss the problem of chromatin opening, which eukaryotic genome has to solve before beginning the process of transcription. This will then lead to pre-initiation complex that results in the initiation of transcription. But at this step, the RNA polymerase has tough time escaping the promoter. So we will discuss a bit about that until it finally escapes from the paused state, transitioning into a productive elongation. And when there is a signal to stop, the process of transcription is terminated. And because RNA polymerase is an enzyme and all enzymes are recycled up to a certain extent, We'll also see how RNA polymerase becomes available to start this process of transcription in a cycle all over again. In your general readings, you may have learned about these steps in a more simplified form, which is the process of initiation, elongation, and termination. So I will structure the following videos in only three steps, instead of seven. And once we see these steps, we'll also see how regulatory networks influence these key steps. So in this video, we begin with square one, which is the issue of chromatin opening. So speaking explicitly, the problem is that the promoters or genes for that matter are not directly accessible in eukaryotes. And that is because their genome, as we have said before, is organized into chromatin. In prokaryotes, we see that the genome is relatively free of blocking proteins. So at the promoters, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme can bind and transcribe the genes. In eukaryotes, the DNA is wrapped around histone molecules, which are large bulky proteins that prevent the transcription factors in polymerase from accessing the promoters. So how does eukaryotes make their promoter free of these histones such that transcription can begin? Well, there are two broad ways to do this. The first is via the inherent DNA sequences, and we'll see two types of these one being CPG islands and the other being nucleosome depleted regions. And second major mechanism is via using proteins known as pioneer factors. And finally, I will talk a bit about enhancers and how their additive effect can help solve the chromatin problem. So let's start by discussing CPG islands. These are long stretches, usually a few kilobases of CG dinucleotide repeats, so they're repeat elements. And we call them islands because they're dispersed throughout an entire region in small, small patches. Their location typically overlaps with the promoters. And a quick fact about CPG islands is that while 70% of promoters in humans are CPG islands, they are more common in housekeeping genes like the polymerases and actin. They're also common to various developmental genes. And this actually correlates pretty well with the fact that these types of genes don't have typical promoter consensus like TADA boxes or initiators. Now, let's understand how CPG islands work. Here we have our DNA wrapped around histones, and the CPG islands are sitting next to the promoter regions that are occupied by histones. These CPG islands attract histone modifiers, which typically are enzymes like histone demethylases and histone acetylases. And because CPG islands are only two nucleotides in length, they can be recognized by these enzymes, even if there are some histones surrounding them. So once these enzymes are recruited at the CPG islands, these enzymes remove the methyl group from histones around that region and add acetyl groups to those histones. The acetyl group is simply a functional group that reduces the overall positive charge of histones. And DNA, as you know, is negatively charged. So when the histones become less positively charged, it loses its attraction towards DNA, which results in the unfolding of the DNA. So once enough histones are removed like this, the promoter regions become accessible for transcription factors. And this binding will recruit RNA polymerase, and then that can start the process of transcription. A quick side note. Notice we said that these promoters don't have a strong consensus. So if you recall from the promoter video, the transcriptions start from these kind of promoters, which have CPG islands only, will be a dispersed transcription initiation. The next set of DNA sequence elements are the nucleosome depleted region favoring locations in the genome. And these are the TADA boxes, initiator, DPE, MTE. 
And these are the core promoters, which we have seen in the promoter structure video. The link for that is in the description if you want to check it out again. So we start with the promoter region, which this time is the core promoter region. And they're bound by histones like usual, and so they're inaccessible. However, these core promoters are pretty AT rich, and the histones don't like that. And therefore, the histones that bind to these promoters are frequently moving in their positions at these core promoters. Not only that, the composition of the moving histones is also quite different. Where normally a histone octamer consists of subunits H2A, H2B, H3, and H4 units, the histones around the promoters have variant subunits. For instance, the H2A subunit is replaced by H2A.C and the H3 is replaced by H3.3 variant. These variants make the histones susceptible to acetylation, and this, as we have seen before, reduces the overall positive charge, which causes it to be then removed. And this large portion of highly dynamic nucleosome region is therefore not so dense in its compaction anymore, and this is called the nucleosome depleted region, where each moving nucleosome within this region is termed as fragile nucleosome. So the next mechanism to make promoters accessible is via very important proteins known as pioneer factors, which were originally discovered and named due to their importance in deciding a cell's programming fate. So to understand how they work, let's begin by drawing out the promoter DNA again, which is wrapped around histones. Now within some promoter regions, or close to promoters oftentimes, there are motifs, which are nothing but DNA sequences, that are recognized by these pioneer factors. The ultra important feature of pioneer factor is that they can recognize their motifs even when they are wrapped around histones. So pioneer factors don't need an open chromatin because they can bind DNA even in a closed or packed chromatin state. Usually these factors start from a particular spot and start scanning the neighboring regions to find a motif to bind. And once they find the motif, they kick out the linker histones first, which frees up the nucleosome. And now this stably bound pioneer factor can recruit chromatin modifiers. Again, these modifiers are histone acetylases or demethylases. And the acetylases will add acetyl groups on the neighboring histones, which reduces their overall positive charge. And they can then start hating the DNA. This makes that underlying DNA available then for transcription factor binding and RNA polymerase binding, and that starts the process of transcription. And this is how pioneer factor take a closed chromatin state into a partially open chromatin state and finally into a fully open state. And the final mechanism to make promoters accessible, we have the enhancers. And these are DNA sequences that increase the likelihood of transcription from a promoter. So they're not a direct way of opening the promoter, which is why this mechanism is a side note. So I want to make sure that you understand that the impact of enhancers is actually additive or cooperative to other mechanism, and it is not a direct mechanism. In humans, the enhancers can be found several tens or hundreds of kilobases away from a promoter, and they can be upstream, downstream, or even in the introns of a gene. So here, let's say our enhancer is upstream of the promoter region. And one important thing to keep in mind is that enhancers are about 1,000 base pairs on average in length, whereas promoters tend to be relatively small. But both of these elements, the promoters and enhancers, recruit transcription factors. So with this in mind, because promoters are smaller, they can only recruit a few transcription factors. But enhancers being longer, they can recruit a large amount. And enhancers recruit a multitude of other proteins also, like pioneer transcription factors, histone modifiers, and some other specific transcription factors. And these enhancers are brought into close proximity with the promoters through some looping mechanisms. And this brings this multitude of proteins bound to the enhancers close to the promoters, which work together to make the promoter DNA more accessible. And this can lead to the increase of the general transcription factor concentration at the promoters. And this increases the likelihood of transcription to begin at the promoter region. 
And that wraps up our discussion on how eukaryotes solve the problem of chromatin opening.